is Teresa Yanaris at Divine Frequency. Inside the disclosure machine, there are many worldviews. This six-part series spotlights the paranoid conspiracy addict. Subscribe, hit the bell, and partner on Patreon if you like these free videos and want to support independent media. You are the hero of this journey. I'm here to provide just a little bit of perspective as you traverse the road of truth-seeking so you can be on the lookout for traps, some of which I've been caught in myself, and maintain your sovereignty in the process. All right, let's dive right in. Hashtag mermaid life. The true facts about the paranoid conspiracy addict worldview that we've covered so far. Number one, everything is a conspiracy. Number two, the guru is elevated. Today's fact, number three, the community is fuel. Your average paranoid conspiracy addict lives in the real world and works a normal job eight to five. When they aren't at work, they tune into live streams hosted by their favorite paranoid conspiracy addict content creators and gurus. Hey, but wait, wasn't that you, Teresa? Well, yes, I'm glad you asked that question. Paranoid conspiracy addict communities are composed of producers, that is content creators, and consumers, or the viewer's audience, funneled in together by a guru or group of gurus. What can happen within these sub-subcultures of the disclosure machine is that a guru will attempt to attract and collect content creators related to the worldview that they are advocating. The content creators believe that the guru is helping the world for the better, and so you see collaborations and projects where the gurus work with other content creators. I was a content creator interested in ufology and then got pulled into a certain subculture led by a guru. The danger for content creators is that they believe that they're doing good and helping the world for the better. They can get looped into certain groups of people without realizing that there's a larger deception going on within that core group that surrounds the guru. Unfortunately, in these cases, both the producers or content creators and the consumers or viewers get pulled into the deception. The question becomes, how far does that deception go? Who is in on it? Back to the community. The consumers and the producers become very close and develop deep relationships. There's a deep sense of family among a group who believes that they're going to help change the world for the better by disseminating important information to the masses. This can make it really difficult for anyone locked inside the certain worldview to break free and see the larger deception. Back to the consumers. They use their vacation time to attend the conferences, to watch the figureheads of their movement speak. You see, they love learning from the gurus and figureheads and perceive the work they are doing as world changing and shifting the world into a new paradigm, a new age of enlightened consciousness, because they too want to help, they look to the gurus to tell them how they can feel like they're assisting with bringing in this new paradigm shift of consciousness. The gurus will usually tell them they can donate money or offer their services for free. This includes professional services, web design, art services, whatever you can think of in that particular community. The community becomes fuel for the gurus to continue to make media content that they will turn around and sell back to the same people who gave their money and services to create it. Again, the producers or content creators and the consumers believe that they're working together to bring about a global shift in consciousness, all the while the guru is continually seeding more information into the echo chamber of belief and moving things forward very quickly. In my case, things were constantly moving very fast, and I was working so hard that seeing the deeper level of truth took time. I was caught up in my own research projects. When I finally realized that the system I had gotten caught up in was deceptive, I immediately jumped off the treadmill. I came to the earth-shattering understanding that the work I had been doing was only serving to help keep me and others looped in an endless wheel to nowhere based on false beliefs around spiritual evolution, as though information processing would lift us to a higher state of spiritual advancement, which is not true. For more information on this topic, please watch my videos The Disclosure Machine, A Subculture, and The Spiritual Awakening Hijack. The community feels so excited just to be a part of the movement and truly feel like they belong to a family of people bringing in a shift of consciousness to the world. They think they're helping. They are mesmerized by the idea of even contributing or playing even a small part in what the gurus and figureheads are doing. Enter the parasocial relationship. Because the paranoid conspiracy guru likely has a huge following and a ton of content for consumption, the consumer will spend hours and hours feeding upon their videos, movies, documentaries, interviews, books, articles, articles and website materials. They feel as though they have a personal relationship with the guru because they've spent so much face time with them online. This creates a dangerous level of infatuation and also these people will likely be very receptive to receiving information from the guru, whatever that information is. This creates groupthink and the bandwagon effect. This creates a community of people who are all believing the same information, which is then fueled over and over by information seeded into the group 
group of people that cherry pick only the corroborating data. This is called the Texas Sharpshooter Fallacy. And quote, this fallacy gets its colorful name from an anecdote about a Texan who fires his gun at a barn wall and then proceeds to paint a target around the closest cluster of bullet holes. He then points at the bullet riddled target as evidence of his expert marksmanship. Speakers who rely on the Texas sharpshooter fallacy tend to cherry pick data clusters based on a predetermined conclusion. Instead of letting a full spectrum of evidence lead them to a logical conclusion, they find patterns and correlations in support of their goals and ignore evidence that contradicts them or suggests the clusters weren't actually statistically significant." End quote. So you can see what a mess we're in at this point, yeah? Which leads us to the concept that paranoia is woke, which we will cover in the next video. A postscript here. I want every content creator out there to know that I know how hard it can be to realize that the hard work you're doing is serving to fuel a machine that isn't in alignment with the truth. You are not alone. I also know firsthand how it feels to have your own paranormal and supernatural experiences hijacked and used by a guru to attempt to persuade you into believing faulty, deceptive worldviews. I want you to know, if you ever come to the truth and want to fix the mess you got yourself into, I will support you and openly talk to you and be here for you. I know how hard it is to untangle this kind of mess, especially when you have a lot of followers and you realize you made a mistake, but I know that you are human. We all make mistakes. Part of the journey is to learn and grow. You did nothing wrong by being deceived. Once you realize you were deceived, then it's time to come clean and say that's the case. Even so, people will be hateful and not accept that you were deceived and are trying to put things right. But ignore the ones who hate and focus on the ones who love and understand what you're going through. The ones who see the bigger picture. I won't condemn you for going through a shift and wanting to realign with truth. If you need help and don't know what to do, if your experiences have been hijacked, if your content has been lost through osmosis to a larger deceptive beast or guru, please reach out to me directly at thedivinefrequency at gmail.com. Stay tuned for more true facts about the paranoid conspiracy addict category of the disclosure machine, a subculture. Thank you for watching. If you have questions or perspectives, please jump into the comment section below to join the conversation. Follow me on Twitter for regular comments commentary, and social media engagement. Thank you to everyone who is a part of the Divine Frequency community, traversing the truth-seeking journey. This is Teresa Yanaris at Divine Frequency, where we critique the images and messages received through media outlets. Bye!